Hey, what's up you guys? This is Eric with Ozone TCG. Today we're taking a look at a little uh, specialty deck profile. This is going to be a Sangin Adventure List featuring Performer Pal Hip Hippo. Um, stay tuned for this deck profile. You definitely do not want to miss it. Before we get into the profile, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Advanced Format content. Let's go ahead and get right in onto it. Alrighty, so for the main deck, you guys should know the first 10 or so cards here. We have the three Water Enchantress, three Wright, one Griffin, one Adventure, and one Draco back. And we also have the one Foolish Burial. This is just your Adventure Engine. You just need to play them at these exact ratios. Um, you theoretically could play more Griffin. Um, it might be a little bit better post Dimension Force when we get Illegal Knight. Um, just to have both of those options, but really you don't need to play more than two right now. I think these are fine. Um, you guys should know those, otherwise no further explanation needed. Then we play Destrudo because it's a free tuner. You can either foolish it, um, or if you already, you know, if you already use Aquamancer, you can summon it, or you can summon it from hand. Um, and then Fairy Tail Snow. You actually use Fairy Tail Snow to dodge some cards, like some negations, like Forbidden Chalice, Infinite Permanence on your Artifact Scythe. You banish. The scythe that you summon on your opponent's turn uh, for, for cost and then summon snow from the graveyard you can do that up to like two or three times in this deck because you're using most of your extra deck and a bunch of cards um, only counter card really to this is artifact lancia during your turn um, you know if your opponent plays it during your turn you kind of can't use it during your opponent's turn they really can't play around it's really hard to unless they're chaining something like droplet and really droplet is the only card that kind of outs it but in this version specifically this deck actually plays around forbidden droplet extremely well they cannot drop it your scythe if you set up the full combo correctly we'll get into that with some of the replays and we have mare mare um it it, it summons your uh, predator plant verde anaconda and triggers dagda um, you definitely need to play this. Uh, it's your one Garnet in the deck where if you draw it, your Yazi combo is actually dead. You cannot use it at all. Um, you can't special summon it except by the effect of a worm monster, in this case Yazi. <clears throat> And uh, you can't normal summon it and then use the effect if you use the adventure cards in the same turn, at least with right. Um, with some of the other cards you can, but you really don't ever want to summon two monsters and then normal summon this card. So it sucks to draw, but out of 52 cards, this is the one literal garnet that we have. Every other card you can draw, some of them are bricks, but some of them um, are not literal garnets. Um, so yeah, and we have the punk cards. I think these are really nice options and they give you a lot of versatility um, They function similarly to the to the red rose dragon engine that we play. We'll cover that in just a second um, But you summon this off of emergency teleport Zayaman and then you add either Madam Spider or Foxy Tune. Foxy Tune can send itself in another card from the hand and then special summon, say, Madam, uh, Madam Spider from the deck or another Xamon. Um, you can search this just to get some more cards out of your deck. Well, and you can leave the Spider in the deck um, in order to summon it in a in the next turn, assuming you're playing against something like Eldritch. And then, of course, the three Telly. It's at three. I mean, this <laughs> no reason why this card should be at three. Um, very, very powerful card, and it's extremely dangerous in the given format. And then we have the Rose Dragon engine. If you guys don't know about this this engine, this you know five card engine, you definitely need to at least try it out. Um, it's just Red Rose Dragon, one Roxy Rose came out in Lightning Overdrive, and then um, Basil Shoot, uh, Basil Rose Shoot. Excuse me. Basically, you summon any of your tuner um, that's not this. Summon Karubini, get your Water Enchantress. Use Karubini and a, a, another name, say um, Psychic Wielder or Crusadia Arborea or a Punk Monster, and then summon this from the deck. And then you have your Rite of um, Aramisir and then this to make your level 7 and level 10. So you go into Baron first, then you go into your level 7, because this card, if it's used for a Synchro Summon, you can special summon Roxy Rose from your hand or deck. Roxy Rose gets you um, Basil Rose Shoot, and then the X is another extender. In the Sword Soul version, you can actually use the secondary effect to recycle some of your banished cards. We're not working about this in this version, though. Um, this is a really potent engine. You'll notice that Red Rose Dragon has increased in value significantly um, compared to the last year or so. Uh, because of this deck and then we have the edge of sabers. I think this is a cool tech card 
Um, you'll see some of the other Sangin Adventure versions uh, playing this card. Uh, it's okay. You know, at, at worst, it's just a free summon. Um, at worst, or I guess it's a brick. <laughs> um, but you can put back your uh, Mari Mare, and I think that's the number one reason to play it, because you can still normal summon this card, use the effect in the graveyard. Um, has 1,200 attacks, so you're not able to use Almirage with it, but it is a level 3 for Krubini, you know, so you can put that uh, Mari Mare back to the, to the top of the deck to make your easy life. That's I think that's the number one reason to play it. Um, I think that's basically the only reason to play it though. Otherwise, it's just a nice level three. And then we have Psychic Wielder. It's a free level three tuner. Um, I definitely like this more than Psychic Tracker because it's a free tuner. Um, you definitely need to play a lot more tuners in this version because your specialty techs, which we'll get into in a second, are non-tuners and we want to make sure we're getting to Red Rose Dragon every single time that turns in your full combo. Or if you can get to, you know, <clears throat> Karubini, um, to get to Water Enchantress using uh, just special summons. Um, so say, you know, Emergency Teleport and Psychic Wielder, cool. Or some of the other tech cards we play without using a normal summon, cool. Then you can get to your um, Fibrax play uh, without really worrying about it. And then this is the, the really nice uh, eight card engine. Um, you guys may have seen the deck profile. I'm gonna link it down below um, to see this where this was played for a little bit in the OCG, and that's where the, the player, um, he won a PS5 at a tournament using this. Normal summon Sangin, you go into Almirage, Almirage, um, Sangin searches on the summon of Almirage to get Crusadia Arborea, and then Arborea just summons itself for free to the zone that Almirage points to um, for a free Fibrax to get your Red Rose Dragon, and then you have your uh, adventure plays. That is the reason to play it. And so if you have an extender, so like say Red, or Sangin plus Emergency Teleport or Psychic Wielder, that is your full combo because it gets you Karubini and a free tuner to get you to Red Rose Dragon. Um, but the other card that they usually play is Psychic Tracker. I think that card is still good. I just like this specialty card. Um, because I think it's a little bit better to draw if you draw its other cards. So Perform Pal Hip Hippo. We don't use the effect whatsoever. It has nothing to do with this deck. We are playing it for Super Hippo Carnival. It says special summon a Perform Pal Hip Hippo from your hand deck or graveyard. Then you can special summon as many Hippo tokens as possible. They cannot be tributed and monsters your opponent controls cannot target monsters from attack for the rest of the turns except those tokens. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck while a Hippo token is in a monster zone. So we don't actually need to summon those Hippo tokens. That's, a, that's an optional effect that's from the, I think from the uh, Arc 5 anime where they actually do use that. We are using it just as an extender it is an emergency teleport for your level three hip hippo theoretically you can do this entire combo without the normal summon um, depending on if you draw emergency teleport or not plus your super hippo carnival which is a fake emergency teleport um, i really like this card because you can st still special summon your hip hippo from the graveyard so it acts as a nice little fodder if you draw the hip hippo cool you draw say hippo carnival and hip hippo you can, you know, add your Griffin from the from the decks in the hand using Faithful Adventure, discard Hip Hippo, and then still summon it later. That is the difference between this and Psychic Tracker, and I still think this has a lot more merit overall than Psychic Tracker. I know Psychic Tracker does special summon itself for free if you draw it. However, we are playing the extra copy technically in here, um, and I think there are just enough extenders and enough free summons um, to make this decent enough. Um, so this is the, I think this is the really the out. You know, the highlight of the deck is the Sangin package plus Hip Hippo. I've been waiting to use this. Um, one of my old friends and old locals, um, shout out to Tyler, uh, showed me this card and I think it was just the coolest thing in like a, a level three, three axis toolbox way back in 2016 um, during Blue Ice format of all things. He was playing a, a version of this. Um, this is where I've always kept it. I've always had a play set of these cards um, since it came out in Dark Illusion. Um, I'm real glad that it's actually playable technically in this deck. And then of course we have the Fusion Destiny package and artifacts. I definitely think that you can cut the Lancia, but I would play it just because you don't really want to lose to PK of all decks. Um, and sometimes the mirror, um, it's really good versus the Water Enchantress starting, even if you shotgun it. So if they're playing like Gamma, it's really the only counter as well as Called by the Grave. I just think that these cards are absolutely needed in this version of the deck. In the Sword Soul version, not so much, but in this, yeah, you gotta play at least the Fusion Destiny package and the Scythe, because the Scythe Lock is, is your play. We'll show you guys a replay in a second, specifically with Hippo, um, both with, with your normal summon and without your normal summon, you'll see that in a second. Um, but I think these are just like the generic cards you play as well. The Ash Blossom, Called by the Grave, Droplet, that's really it. So unless your opponent's playing um, this version of the deck as well, 
I don't think there's really a way to play around it the same way in this build. PK has his own version um, to play around it using some of your trap cards like Fogblade and Breaksword and Rusty. Um, but I don't think it's nearly as strong as a version like this because this deck does not lose to something like Lancey. Your plays don't rely on banishing except for Water Enchantress. So if you already draw the right, then you're still fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I just don't think there's a reason to, to play the Phantom Knight cards over these. I think overall, just these lower power cards tend to be better because they don't brick nearly as much and don't lose to or play into as many hand traps. Um, so that's the main deck. Extra deck is actually, I think, the exact same as that other player's um, version of the deck. Playing Almirage, Link Spider, Karubini, Fibrax, Dagda, Nightmare Phoenix, Unicorn, Axis Code, Running Anaconda, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, you guys need to have this card. Um, Baron de Fleur, same with this, the Sword Soul version of the deck, actually plays two of these and doesn't play um, sometimes Savage and doesn't play the DP package. Um, but if you wanna play two Baron in, the, in this instead of say, uh, I don't know, Nightmare Unicorn, you could. I don't recommend it though, I think DP adds a lot to this, especially for your ending combo. Um, then Shooting Riser in case you your monster's negated, your Dagda's negated. You can actually go into this in one of the combos and mill it from the deck and then standby phase Baron can actually summon it back. Um, there's a, it's, there are a bunch of options when playing around hand traps. Um, and then you see Evil of the Yang Zing. This is part of your combo too with uh, Mari Mare. And then Arcolite. This is actually what stops your opponent from using Droplet, discarding a monster. It says any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished and set. Because they can't send a monster for cost from the hand to the graveyard specifically, um, it doesn't discard technically, it just sends, it has to send. Um, it actually turns off that, so they can only send spells and traps. Meaning you can still respond with something like Snow, you can still negate with Baron, you can negate with Arclight itself. Um, yeah, there's really no counterplay to it if they don't have, you know, some kind of out for it if, if they don't have like four outs or four negates or something like that. Um, it is really, really difficult to play around this version, especially. This also turns off cards like Ghost Ogre and Effect Veiler because those cards also send to the graveyard. They don't discard as costs. And then finally, Boar Lord Savage Dragon. Sometimes we'll go into this. Honestly, I think this is the card you could cut the most. Um, you could play something like Black Rose if you really wanted to. You could play that with the, the Rose Dragon cards. I just don't see this being summoned too often. I'm sure it's fine when you do. It won't come up in too many games, I don't think. Um, side deck is really up to you guys. We had just kind of really basic ones like Gamma, the Gamma Package Token Collector for the Mirror, and for Sword Soul, uh, Lightning Storm for back row decks, Cosmic Cyclone for back row decks, uh, Red Reboot as well, and then Solemn Judgment going first. You could play either Solemn Judgment, Appointer of the Red Lotus, or Anti-Spell Fragments. I think they all do pretty much the same thing in this deck. Um, basically, you just have to have your Scythe Resolve. And unless you're playing something like Eldritch, which you really don't care about because there are ways to play around, stupid stuff like evenly eldritch can't send its, itself from the hand of the graveyard's cost so trap eldritch is actually just a free matchup um yeah i don't think they really do that much otherwise you could play something like imperial iron wall too um yeah i, I don't think there's a whole lot of other really main you know side deck cards you need um but we're gonna go ahead and show off some replays on how this deck plays especially featuring both sangan and perform pal hip hippo um, take a look at them and let me know what you guys think so this first replay is going to showcase what we can do off of Emergency Teleport and Super Hippo Carnival. We're going to pretend like we don't have Water Enchantress in the hand, and we're still going to pretend like we have Destiny Hero Dasher in the main, uh, in, the z in the hand as well. So we're going to use this in kind of standard hand here. Well, let's go ahead and see how we play through this. So we're going to activate Emergency Teleport, and here we're going to get the Punk, uh, No Punk Zayaman, and Zayaman's gonna add our Foxy Tune. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use Super Hippo Carnival in this case, summon Hip Hippo, and then use Karubini, Karubini Effect to get our Water Enchantress. And Water Enchantress is gonna grab us our right of Aramisir. And then we're gonna use Rights. We haven't used any normal summon effects, we can still activate it. And then we're gonna use Foxy Tune, pitching our other, you know, discard whatever we want from the hand in this case it is the you know proxy water enchantress to summon madam spider from the deck you can also summon another zayman um it really doesn't matter if you want to play the you know you could even play wagon and wagon's not great but in this case you could also play uh, madam spider for uh, an additional interruption you can do a, uh, a trap card you can use, add one of the trap cards by paying 600. Um, in this case we're just going to use it for the tuner effect and then we're going to go ahead and use fateful adventures effect 
Then we're going to get our Wandering Griffin. And of course, just so we don't you know, lose any of that. Um, did want to say here is actually where Nibiru, right when we summon Wanderer, right before, you know, when it activates in hand, if we were to get Nibiru there, um, that would be a choke point, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, it does make Griffin not as strong, um, but it, it really just depends on your hand. In this case, we're going to go Fibrax, though, summon our Red Rose Dragon, and Red Rose plus Griffin is a level 10. In this case, Baron de Floor, and then Red Rose Triggers. And so then Red Rose is going to get a Roxy Rose, and then Rox Rose is going to add Basil Shoot, uh, Basil Rose Shoot. We use Yuzi, destroy Yuzi, summon Mari Mayor from the deck. Then we summon actually our Dagda in this case. So um, Dagda, we're going to use our Mari Mayor and then summon, uh, or in this case, we can use Dagda on the first effect of, of Mari Mare. It doesn't really matter when you use it. Um, if you want to play around certain cards, you can use it early, um, but you don't have to. Then we use our Link Spider. This is actually mandatory in the combo because Verde Anaconda requires two effect monsters. And so here we're going to have our Verde Anaconda plus our set card. And so the uh, Basil Rose Shoot is actually relevant because it summons at level three back to make our level four um, Herald of the Arc Light plus a level one non-tuner. Um, we do banish our materials, and honestly, that's okay, because if you scythe lock them, plus have DP, plus have Baron, plus have Arc Light, you're probably not losing, even versus a deck that doesn't really um, care about scythe at all. But this is the setup, so they can't droplet monsters you. Um, because of this, really, I don't think there's a whole lot of counterplay to this. You have to have something like Gamma, uh, Droplet, I mean, you, there's really nothing else you can do about it. Um, you have to have like three interruptions on that just to not get scythe locked. That's not even counting through anything else. You know, if they don't, if they see that you're playing a certain deck, you play triple tactic sounds or whatever. It, it just doesn't even matter at that point. It's ridiculous. Um, I think this is one of the strongest ways, but we're going to feature after this in just a second, we're going to feature, um, the hip hippo plus Sengen combo. And really it's basically always going to be the same combo because all your cards just want to do the same thing. You can also, this is how you play around evenly versus something like Trap Eldritch, you can set Lancia from the deck instead because Artifact Dagda sets any uh, artifact monster from the deck and you can destroy it with DPE or you can destroy uh, you know, Lancia plus Dagda and then get the guarantee double summon. Uh, whatever you guys want to do, but this is one of the strongest plays. I think this is the strongest play in the game right now. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the second replay here. Alright, in this case, of course, we have the Destrudo and Super Hippo Carnival and Griffin. And we actually opened up Fateful Adventure. I don't think this is awful to open up. You don't really want to, just because you get it for free later. But I think it's fine to open up. And honestly, it probably should have activated it first, but that's okay. We're going to just pretend like we have just the Griffin ride that we drew it and have uh, Super Hippo Carnival. Honestly, if we had any other blank, you know, except for, you know, Mario Mare, it would be the exact same combo. We just would have, like, you know, defensive cards in hand, anything like that. <clears throat> then, of course, we go through the standard play. Again, this time we have the Tuner. Um, so we can use Karubini plus Arborea to go ahead and go to Fibrax and get any of our other Tuners. In this case, we're going to go Red Rose Dragon. You guys will see that right now. And then from here, it's the exact same combo. Honestly, Super Hippo Carnival just takes the place of something like Psychic Tracker, um, just to make sure your combo is more consistent. If you also want to play an Xyz, um, say Break Sword, or um, any card that can attack directly, um, there are a few rank threes that are okay options. You can actually make Double A Zeus. Um, and then clear the opponent's board going second. That's assuming, again, you don't get side lock. But versus something like Eldlich, you know, if you have just two level threes left, something like e Tally plus Super Hippo Carnival, it's the same thing. I mean, you can really clear them. You can outgrind them. Um, this deck does not lose to so something like there can be only one particularly because all of your cards are basically going to be different types. Um, the only thing that's relevant is Artifact Dagda plus Herald of the Arc Light. Those are actually fairies. Um, otherwise, and DPE and Baron. Um, otherwise, you have just plants, just a bunch of different types. You have fiends, worms, cybers, dragons, machines, um, wing beasts. Uh, another fairy, okay, and then warrior, come, and then yeah, regular beasts. Um, just a bunch of different types. Um, I think Gozen and Rivalry, you know, going first versus the deck is strong. 
but I don't think something like there can be only one, which traditionally has been a better floodgate in, you know, over the last like four years, um, hurts this a lot more. But let me know what you guys think. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up and then, yeah, we can go ahead and uh, maybe experiment with this deck a little bit more. I really wanna see where this goes. Um, but if you guys like this deck profile, please be sure, again, to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below for this. I'm really excited to play this. I'm going to play a very similar version of this at some of the tournaments. Um, I do like the Sword Soul version overall more. I just think that this has a lot more flexibility. This is a far more creative way to play the deck. Um, because Baron destroying Izzy to summon a different worm monster is really, really fun to resolve. It's nice. Making Herald is also really, really cool. Um, yeah, but let me know what you guys think. I really want to feature a lot more of these deck profiles. I think the adventure stuff, just the adventure good stuff, so the fact that it's probably one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the TCG, um, says a lot about how much the format has changed. Even though it's not a great way to play the format, you know, having to play around Artifact Scythe, I think it's just cool in deck building theory. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, we'll feature more of these. But this is Eric with Ozone TCG. I'll see you guys in the next one.